Good evening, Mr. Bond fans, and welcome once again. If you're familiar with this channel at all, then you will know that I'm a massive fan and advocate of the James Bond video games. But recently, I've discovered that I should actually be more specific and say that I'm a fan of James Bond video games to a point. And that point being since I've been alive. I've played and enjoyed most Bond video games from the 90s onwards, but 007's life on consoles began a decade earlier in the 1980s, with several games released on consoles I've never heard of or even know how to pronounce. Amstrad PCW. MSX. Musks? ZX? Zooks? Auric? As in, like, Auric Goldfinger Auric? My relationship with Bond video games really begins with Goldeneye on the N64 in 1997 and goes from there. I've played some of the earlier games, James Bond 007 The Duel for instance, but they were all a bit before my time. I was born in 1989, so as great as The Spy Who Loved Me for the Amiga might have been in 1990, it was beyond my stubby little baby fingers to enjoy such a game at the time. But I am a completist, and I'd love to play every James Bond video game. The problem is I've never owned a lot of these older consoles, and even if I were to acquire them, I wouldn't even begin to know how to go about connecting them to a modern TV. I mean, it was hard enough trying to connect my N64 recently, never mind an Atari. Uh, one of these is a HDMI, right? So praise be to the real-life cues for giving us emulators, and a good few of these older Bond games exist in emulator form, including 1983's James Bond 007. Now, there was a text adventure game released prior to that, but this, as far as I'm aware, was the first Bond shooting game, the first one resembling something that I'd recognize as a video game, and it was released for a whole bunch of platforms, including a number of Atari systems, and was published and developed by Parker Brothers. Before getting into the game itself, I do have to say that I really adore the box art for the game. It's nice and striking and has a cool retro feel to it, which I guess was just a contemporary feel at the time it was released. The blurb on the back of the box does well to hype up the game too. When it comes to fast-paced action and intrigue, nobody does it better than Bond. James Bond. But you can try when you reenact scenes from three great James Bond movie classics. 007 specially designed vehicle will take you on the ride of your life. Over land, in the air, and under the sea. Through it all, you must avoid obstacles, avert enemies, and accomplish three different missions. Illuminate the night for an oil rig rescue raid in Diamonds Are Forever, get Stromberg and his undersea hideaway in The Spy Who Loved Me, save the Earth from cosmic catastrophe in Moonraker. Multiple levels and special effects add challenge and excitement. It's the best of Bond in one great game. Well that all sounds fairly exciting. My appetite is suitably whetted for more. Let's get going! Okay, level novice, I think that's for the best for now. Okay, well, let's see how we get on. Okay, thankfully someone put the whole instruction booklet online so I can figure out what the hell these pixels are supposed to represent. I do love as well how a whole page of the booklet is there to explain just how to put the game cartridge into the console and turn it on. Turn the on off switch to on. <laughs> so that's where I've been going wrong all these years. Well, thank goodness we've made it past that step. Right, on to some story. Your itinerary, Mr. Bond. In this game, you are Bond. James Bond. 007, the world's most famous secret agent renowned for your cool and confidence, not to mention your biting wit. You've been selected by the British Secret Service for three clandestine, utterly critical, and nearly impossible missions. These will be accomplished at the controls of specially designed multi-purpose craft that boasts extraordinary capabilities. It has the properties of a car, a plane, and a submarine, and it's equipped with the latest weaponry. We think you'll find it more than adequate. In brief, Mr. Bond, this is what lies ahead. First stop, Las Vegas in Diamonds Are Forever. No casinos here, rather you've got to cross the desert in the dead of night. A very romantic place indeed when you're not being shot at. In Moonraker, you'll recognize your old nemesis Hugo Drax and his poison satellites. From your position on the lake, you must stop the satellites from ever reaching Earth. We know you like a change of scenery, Bond, so the next stop is Sardinia in The Spy Who Loved Me. Stromberg's underwater laboratory is your destination in this one. We're confident you'll know what to do when you reach it. Well, that's not very specific. Oh, about the details. Read on. We want you to be prepared for the assault, frogmen, missiles, submarines, and the like. Not to worry. Good luck, Bond, and bon voyage. Okay, so in this version of the game that I'm playing, which I believe was for the Atari 2600, we have three levels, three different Bond adventures. That all sounds very straightforward. Reading the narrative of the game from manual itself is actually really cool. I am old enough to remember when you had to read a game's manual for extra details on the story and the setup in some cases. 
basis, so I did get a bit of a nostalgic little kick out of this. Anyway, the first level, Diamonds Are Forever. Oh, of course, how could I not tell earlier on that I was playing a level based on Diamonds Are Forever? The resemblance to the film is uncanny. Okay, I promise that I'm not going to be a complete philistine about this. I know that there were plenty of technical and design limitations to video games of this era, so I'm not going to ding it too hard for not giving me a perfect 3D rendering of Sean Connery with motion control capabilities. What, I have to unhook the bra? Well, I don't know how to do that. So yeah, diamonds are forever. Objective, land on Serafino's oil rig and rescue Tiffany Case. Okay, the Bond geek in me kind of loves that Serafino is the villain here in the movie. It's obviously Blofeld, but the rights to the character were subject to much dispute around this time, so they made a substitute and included Serafino, a villain from Fleming's Diamonds Are Forever, and that's really cool. It's much neater than them just tweaking Blofeld's name slightly to a sound alike. Crowfeld. So you'll need to get to Serafino's oil rig, traveling over a desert filled with treacherous flowing craters, boiling radioactive material? Uh, oh, okay, so, so yeah, you're Bond driving through the desert and you're avoiding lasers from satellites and helicopters and shooting diamonds in the sky for points. Okay, let's go! Okay, so, space button fires a laser and then there are helicopters, satellites, there's pile of radioactive material. Okay, it's irritating that the car can't move beyond like the halfway point, like even when I press down. Okay, I've hit no diamonds yet. I love how the car jumps, like, like, you know, like all cars do. I don't really know what the scanning thing from the helicopter is about. The satellites seem to just kind of fire when they're over you, but then at random... Oh, okay, water. Oh, what the heck is that? Oh, it's not good, apparently. Oh, God. Okay. I just have to jump over those. Oh, I've hit, like, no diamonds yet. This is really frustrating. Okay. Ah! <laughs> the frogman. <laughs> I love how the instruction booklet refers to these guys as mechanical frogmen. Like, they may look like marine biologists, but they're actually robots designed to create a radioactive splash. And don't you just hate it when that happens? You meet someone, you get chatting, you find out they're a marine biologist, and then a car whizzes past outside and they explode into radioactive slime. And speaking of bummers, trying to end this level is a freaking nightmare. So I need to hit these diamonds in order to illuminate the oil rig. Ah, oh, some of the shooting just seems to be so random. Ah, oh, I get a diamond! Okay, get over that. What the hell is this oil rig? Oh, the oil rig's there! Oh, I- oh, damn it. Okay, so I'm guessing you can't just go into the side of the oil rig. How do I get on it, then? Okay. Oh, oh okay, so I, I guess things disappear. Right, okay, there's, there's the thing, so now if I... Did I do it? Oh, for God's sake! So I guess I know I'm getting near the oil rig once everything disappears, but how the hell do I get on the oil rig? Okay, aha, okay. Things disappeared. Oh, I need to hit that thing, otherwise I can't see it. Okay, there we go. Okay. Did I do it? Oh, God! Oh, okay, different- Oh, whoa, okay. What? 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 How did I- Okay, so I have to be underwater for that? What on earth? So I've got like no lives left either. Oh, oh. Yeah, so immediately you're thrown into the Moonraker level in which you need to destroy three spinning satellites. Obviously it sounds all well and good in the instruction booklet, but in reality... Okay. Okay, so I need to do this at a point where I'm under the water enough that I don't get killed by the thing, and also... 
Okay, we can do this, we can do this, we can do this! Yes, okay. Oh my god, they fire as well? Oh, oh, I can destroy those, okay. What the heck is... Ah! Uh... Ah, uh, no! Come on, come on, come on. You can do this, you can do this, you can do this, you can do this. No, you can't do this. Oh, okay. What am I even trying to do here? Okay, okay it's just all about timing. Oh, no! I gave this a few tries, but honestly, it was just kind of impossible for me. And I don't doubt that there are people out there who made it through all of these levels <laughs> with or without their sanity intact by the end of it. But this tested the limits of even this now semi-completist Bond fan. And I didn't make it past this level. I will never know the delights of playing the Spy Who Loved Me level on the Atari 2600, which would have seen as attempting to destroy Stromberg's undersea laboratory. But meh, I'll live. So there we go. That's James Bond 007 for, I think, the Atari 2600. 600 and uh eh I would never go this far back in time to play a video game if it were not for some kind of better historical context or understanding because I know that I'm not going to get a whole lot out of this experience beyond that. This was never going to be something that I did for fun in my leisure time, but I was interested to know what Bond's console origins were like and uh, now I know that and what of it? Quite right, Mr. Max Caliber. What of it indeed? Look, aside from the box art and the excruciating Bond theme, nothing about this gameplay here makes you think you're playing a Bond game. I mean, yes, there are tenuous links to the films with oil rigs and a car that transforms to suit different terrain, but the technical capabilities and limitations of the time mean that I mean, the design is so limited that this could be anything. You could slap any image of a franchise with a car in it on this box and it would sell us that. I'm sure that having James Bond on the box shifted more copies than it would have done otherwise, but the point of a Bond game should be to either make the player feel like Bond or provide an escapist Bond adventure in its own right, and this does neither. The design and look are one thing, but the controls are just the nail in the coffin. I mean, obviously I'm not playing this game on its intended console or with a joystick, but just how the car responds, uh, particularly in water, is really annoying. It kind of bobs and rises up like a boy, and it's annoying that you can't destroy the things that are attacking you. Like, you just have to dodge, which isn't as fun, and in fact, yeah, I just didn't get any fun out of this at all. It's just a bit frustrating. So while I'm glad that I have experienced an element of Bond's video gaming origins, I won't be returning to this in a hurry, nor would I recommend that any of you do the same. So did anyone out there play this game when it was first released? And if so, what are your memories of it from the time? Have you been back to revisit it recently? Please do let me know in the comments section below. And as always, if you are not subscribed to this channel, please do scroll below and hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on future Bond related videos that I make for this channel. Also below are links to my social media pages, including my Twitter page and my Instagram page and my Patreon page if you really want to go one extra step in supporting this channel. So with all that being said, and until next time, Bond fans, so long for now. Ah! I really want to make it through to that damn Moonraker level and actually be able to play it. Ah! Ah! Okay, the frogman and the satellites I can handle. It is those damn helicopters. Now here one comes to wreck the day. Oh, didn't even fire at me that time. Ah, oh, the oil rig, okay. Oh, for God's sake, it's over the friggin' pile of... Okay, come on. Ah! Oh! It is, it's always when I'm getting on this friggin' oil rig that's the most annoying part of this experience. Okay, I know that once all of the things in the sky disappear, okay, we're coming up to it. Okay, it's underneath the frogman. Okay, this gives me a good point of reference. Yes, I did it! Oh, oh, okay, good, we can just skip that! Okay, so I guess I can't... 
be above the ground when the when the thing goes off, but 